Hello, this video is going to cover LDAP and user management. It's a part of lesson three, which is mobility manager and basic printer setup. So in this lesson, what we're going to cover is how to set up LDAP users, how to do a synchronization, and maybe also how to set up manual users. So as I said before, if users are using the apps, or if you're doing a secure mailbox, or file print, or anything like that really, um, they're going to need to exist for drive print. We're going to need to know who they are. So one easy way of doing that is going down to the users pane here and just adding users. I can hit the plus button. I can enable them. I can give them a username and a login ID and a password. Um, we could give them a, a pin if we're doing pin printing, for instance, to a device that supports pin printing. I could give them a card ID if they had a, an authentication card, like an HID card or a CAT card. I can also give them a short code, which we can use to log in uh, when there are um, authentication modules present. So I can set their Windows ID if they're doing a file print to a shared drive printer. And if they're going to send emails, and we're going to limit who can send an email, I'm going to want to know their email address. And for the app's sake, we can set a favorite target, as well as a department code and a default account if we're billing it back. Also here with the mobile device ID, um, when that user first logs in, what it's going to do is it's going to set their MAC address or their UDID of their mobile device so that the next time they open that app and they're on the network, it'll automatically log them in. I can also set them as a user, give them a role here if we're limiting what they're able to do. And so that's a pretty easy way of just manually creating them. But sometimes that doesn't work, right? Sometimes you have a thousand users. It's a school, for instance. We want to bring in all students in the fifth grade so that they can print and maybe the sixth grade too, but not any lower than that. So in that case, we're going to want to do an LDAP sync. So like I said before, you can do as many users as you want. I'm just going to need to create a new LDAP sync. I'll just call it LDAP. Here I'm just going to sync it manually. And I can set the next sync time. And if we're not allowing the user to log in with their LDAP password, if we want to give them a password, we can set a default password here. But we're actually in this case going to have them just go ahead and use their um, Active Directory username and password. So if I go to the server here, I can put the host in, and in this case I'm on the domain controller, so I'll just do the local IP. The port is 389, which typically doesn't change. And I'm going to put the base DN for this server, and in this case it's DC Drive Demo and DC Local. The login domain is going to be drivedemo.local. My user is administrator at drivedemo.local. We're going to use a fully qualified name. I'm not going to tell you my password, but I'm going to enter it. And the search filter is going to look for uh, any, any person, which is pretty wide ranging. Also here I have it to page results. The typical response for an Active Directory server is 1,000 users. If the administrator does not want to change that, we can enable paging the results, and that means that we can page a thousand, another thousand, another thousand, and get back all the users that we need. In the attributes here, you'll see that these are the AD attributes that I'm syncing to the drive print attributes. So, for instance, if in AD we have in the pager field the user's card number, um, or if there's a unique field, we can match those up. So if I go back here, I'm going to go ahead and test it. And what happens when you test it is you see that it succeeded. Uh, it stopped at 27 eligible users found of 27. And what that does is it looks um, and it checks against the base DN that I set up. It checks the filter against that base DN, and that's where it gives me the eligible users. And in this case, since I have not specified a valid group, it's just going to pull back all the users that exist there. But let's say I only want a specific group of users. I'm going to go back to the valid group. And I created a, a group called students. So it's going to be the distinguished name of that group. 
which in Active Directory you can just browse that object, right click it, hit properties, and you should be able to find the DN or the distinguished name. And here in this case it's CN equals students, CN equals users, and then DC drive demo, DC local. And if I test that now, you'll see that I only have three eligible users of 27. And the reason for that is because here in Active Directory, in my students group, uh, I only have three users there. I guess I would need to go to students and then properties. There are three members there. John Nicholson, Albert Einstein, and Abraham Lincoln. So you can actually create separate LDAP syncs too. So let's say uh, we want to sync the administrators once a week or once a year and the students once a week. I can create more than one sync there. You're going to want to make sure though that the LDAP synchronization service is on here in Manage Server. And it's set to manual. So what that means is we need to go ahead and, and set another sync. Before I do that though, I'm going to want to go down here in settings. I'm going to hit edit and I'm going to turn on LDAP authentication. What that's doing is it's forcing the user to use their Active Directory name and password. There's also a feature here that will allow us to store that password if you want. You can disable that in the settings too. So that if we're doing a single sign-on with a device that maybe is hosting Drive Image as well, um, we'll actually store the password so that we can pass it to Drive Image and do things like authenticated email and browsing home folders and, and stuff like that. But you can disable that in the settings if you don't want to save the password. So here what I'm going to do is set the next sync time. It's 12.16 a.m. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go next sync time, 12. Well, actually, I need to set the month. It's January 29th, 2013. I'm going to set it for 12.17. So the LDAP service is enabled. I can see that the next sync time is 12.17 a.m. And uh, it is, let's make sure it is 129. Yep, it's 129. So if I go back to Manage Server, um, should be able to watch it. Also, I can go to the service logs up here, and I should be able to get into the LDAP. Let's see, there we go. Next sync is at 129 at uh, 1217 and 40 seconds. So actually it should go ahead and run if I go to the LDAP. Oh, it already happened. 1217, synchronization for LDAP set. Brought in Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, and John McOlson. So if I go down to, to the users now, I have those three users. So it's not going to actually load all the users here because sometimes you get 10,000 or what have you. So there's a search feature here. So I could start typing in um, a login there and it's going to sync it and, and search based off what has a mat in it. You can do it for any of those fields too. So remember, if you're going to allow submission uh, based off an email that's not anonymous, and we'll set that up in the next video, or if they're going to use the apps, or if they're going to use um, AirPrint, but you don't want anyone to print. If you disable the guest user here, then AirPrint will only work for known users. It'll discard the rest of the jobs. But if guest is enabled, then all guest prints will be set as, um, or all AirPrints for non uh, or unknown users will be attributed to the guest. And also, if I want to allow users to upload or to do a file print to a shared printer. They need to actually exist as users.